I want to find people who are fun to work with. Like I want to find people that I can work with that get my vibe and that I don't have to be afraid to like try to pretend and and walk on eggshells with like for clients and stuff. Like I want to work with people who, who can enjoy us and like us as a brand. Welcome to another installment of the Perspective Podcast. This is my co-host, Mitch Harley. My name is Devin. We're here today with Jennifer and we're talking about dealing with the haters, especially in this new interconnected world with social media and all the other wonderful things that the internet has brought to us. Um, (laughs) There there seems to be other things that we didn't bargain for. uh, So so we're kind of caught in a storm right now. I always say that this is like the wild, wild west. There's, there's no rules. We're all trying to figure it out. Um, yeah. and, and being connected to almost anybody in the world is, is profound to say the least. Um, but, it, but it does have its, uh, its negative uh, impact in, in the way that we can do business and, and, and work together. So uh, Jennifer, I'd love to start with uh, just a quick background of who you are, where you came from and why you're there. All right, cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys having me on today. I was super excited when you reached out. So super excited. I know you guys, if you keep this up, it, I can see this being big. You guys have a cool like persona about you, you know, like influencer vibes. Oh, so shucks. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you guys on like Omega and then I'll be like, I'm coming back for part two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when we're speaking um, to stadiums, we'll make sure we invite you. <laughs> oh yeah, ditto, ditto. I'm when I'll I'll send you guys some VIP tickets too when I'm speaking. That that's goals for me too. I, I'd love to be um like a speaker, just motivational. I've been like so, through so many things, so I feel like I have a lot to share. But I will okay. I'll get to like actually my business part. But yeah, so my husband and I are business partners, and we own Alpha Brand Marketing Agency. We're based out of Frisco, Texas, Dallas area. And we started that in 2018. We were sick of working for other people. And we were like, you know, I was working in my background was heavily in dentistry. And so I was, I was office manager of multiple practices and it was just so mentally draining. And, you know, I had a family to come home to. And every time um, you know, I go to work and I come home, I would be so just mentally drained that I wasn't even spending time with my family. I was just like falling asleep without even being able to keep myself awake. And so I, I hated that. And so did my husband and we were like, you know what? He had worked in manufacturing in the Pacific Northwest before we moved to Texas. And he just really like was going 12 hour shifts dealing with, you know, breathing in, metals and things like that. Cause it was like a bullet manufacturing plant and it was just super hard. And then he basically like topped out where he could make, unless he went to like a manager position where you'd be working for night shift for like five years. And we're like, no amount of money is worth not seeing each other and having a horrible life like that for like a few dollars raised. And so we're like, no. And obviously that was one of the second best places to work in the town that we lived, unless you were an entrepreneur. And we were just like, we don't feel like there's anything here for us anymore. And so we were like, you know what? We've always wanted to go to Texas. Let's go. So we went, we came here. Um, I was able to get a job in dentistry to kind of like sustain us while we were working on building our business on the side. And he kind of worked on that heavily while I worked to help support us. And then we took the leap and we're like, you know what, we're going all in because I don't have any time to help you. And, you know, we're trying to raise a family. And so it's just, it was crazy. So we're like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's like, let's Steve Harvey is like, entrepreneurs have to be a little bit crazy, you know? And we're like, okay, we are freaking crazy. Let's go for it. So I quit my job and we had had some clients at the time. And so we're like, you know what, let's just grind it out. And so ever since we have just been like on the most incredible journey, it is a freaking roller coaster you guys know, like owning your own business and learning the ins and outs of everything is so crazy, but it's so much more worth it to do it for yourself than it is to just go work for someone else. I think so. So one of the, one of the reasons I reached out was, um, the, the personality persona, not that it's not real, but what you project on social media, it comes across, um, very honest, very open, very vulnerable. And I think that draws a lot of people. Right. To you. And, it, and it, it's, I think it's obvious that you use social media to connect with people, to reach out, uh, whether it be on a personal or business level. Yeah. Now, social media, 
we've talked lots of, in the past how it's got its it's got its benefits it yeah. does i mean the fact that we can do this you're in texas you know we're in calgary and yeah. you know to be able to have that that connection and and i think that's really neat and moving forward that's always going to be there but i think we all know about the pitfalls as right. well and because the problem with social media is it allows opinions to flow and uh, opinions can be very controversial. They can be hurtful and yeah. they can come across in a way that's not, I guess, you know, constructive criticism, yeah. and especially from an entrepreneur, when you're doing something that's maybe against the grain, when you're doing something that maybe other people don't understand, that's a very tough place to lean on for your advertising brand awareness, self-awareness, you know, all of that. Yeah. What have you come across? What have you encountered? What have you, how have you overcome? Let's kind of open that conversation up. Yeah, definitely. So I actually used to, so I went through like this weird, almost, it felt like it was overnight, but it wasn't because it was like decades of my life leading up to the overnight, you know, where people always say that where overnight success to everyone else seems like it just went like that, but you know how much like of a grind you went through. I think it's similar to that for me with the whole like criticism thing, because growing up with my family, um, you know, they it's okay. Let me, let me make sure I put this correctly. So basically my family, like my mom, you know, she was supportive of me when I was like a teenager and things like that. She was more like trying to be my best friend than a parent and all this kind of stuff, you know? So but in school, you know, you deal with that already. Basically, social media is like school magnified because like you can you're like, but with the world, you know what I mean? So whatever you were going through in school, like bullies or judgment and like constantly second guessing yourself, you know, you can seriously feel that way, too, on social media. And I always I cared more about what everybody thought about me than myself. Always. And especially my family, like I was a huge people pleaser and I would literally run myself into the ground for people. And I just, I had no backbone. And I know if you watch my social media now, you're like, okay, you're lying, but I, it's true, you know, cause like now I'm all like, eh, whatever, but, but there was a time when I didn't have a backbone and I wouldn't stand up for myself and I would cower and I would just say, okay. And like all those things just literally weigh on you, you know, for years. And so once I actually moved to Texas was part of my self-liberation, I guess you would say away from like family and just people who don't believe in you enough. And so, so once I got here, I realized, and it actually happened, it was kind of strange on like new year's Eve ish, because normally like on holidays and um, everything like that, you know, you, you have, you have an expectation for me, family, like you must do this on this date this is what I need you to do all this kind of stuff. Right. And so I realized the next day that I didn't do what everyone expected of me. And I was like, Oh my God, like I felt so free. And I was like, Holy crap. Like I didn't do what my family wanted me to do. And that was really the catalyst of bringing who I am right now in this moment, because I realized then life will still go on. If I don't like obey what everyone else around me wants, like, and life still goes on for me, especially like, and whatever they thought, like who freaking cares, you know? And so from that moment I realized, and then I really started budding into that. And that's actually around the same time that my entrepreneur journey started. So I've kind of been able to carry that with me through this, which I think has helped a lot because you know, if I had been the same person I was then when all that judgment weighed on me and like, I would be down on myself. Like if that was to happen to me in business or becoming an entrepreneur, putting myself out on social media, I would probably be like a train wreck. You know what I mean? Because if you don't have that strength inside, you don't like then whatever people say really like, and it's always the mean stuff. Like people can say all these great things, but the one mean comment is the one you think about all day, you know? And so it's like, for people who are constantly getting hammered with, you know, controversy or, you know, rude comments or things like that, that's always going to sit in the back of their mind more than if someone was to say, Oh, wow, you look great today. Or, I love that message. You're like, great. But Johnny said, you know, that I suck, you know, so <laughs> like that's what you think about. But, um, luckily when I started my journey, have you guys heard of Grant Cardone? Yeah. 
Okay. I don't know if you guys like him. We, I don't we know mentioned him a few times. Yeah. Okay. Shadow Grant Cardone. following him <laughs> on another page. And I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, well, I he was actually one of the people that I heard about once I started, because like I mentioned, my friend David, um, he kind of told us about Grant. But the one thing, and Grant has tons of controversial crap you know what i mean like if you know grant like you know you know right so but one of the good things that i did appreciate from his content was like allowing me to realize there's like a poverty mindset and so um and then also about haters because he was like man if you don't have enough haters you know you're not getting enough attention you know and so i'm like oh my god and like he made me realize just over watching his content stuff that like haters real like once you reach a certain level or once you're like on the come up, if you're, if you have haters, people are noticing you. So I, I was just kind of like re-engineered it thinking it that way. Cause I'm like, you know, most people don't think about that. They're like, Oh my God, like, ah, oh, people hate me. And like, oh, I'm just doing so bad. Or like, if somebody commented something rude to me, like they must've hated my video, you know, I don't even care. And it's funny because when my husband, like he'll see me, I literally like celebrate each hater. I'm like, yes, like somebody said something so mean to me today. And I was like, yes, because I know I'm like, I I know how big of a dream I have to become what I want to become and my goals. And I'm like, I've got to get there by having some haters. So I'm like, once they start popping up for me, it's exciting. And I want other people to realize that too, is because first of all, when something is triggered by like a hater with something that you say, it's usually because of some sort of insecurity that they have and because maybe you made them feel something and reminded them about something about themselves they don't even like. You know, last year on Father's Day, um, I actually had a different LinkedIn account. I deleted it and like started over. And But last year on my old LinkedIn account, um, I posted a, link, a thing about Father's Day about, you know, not every father needs to be told Happy Father's Day, you know, because like all this feel right? Because not every dad is a great dad. And this guy messaged me, he direct messaged me and was just like, you know, I, my daughter was dealing with this and, and I was trying to do this. And like, he just unloaded his whole heart, like being like peeved at what I said. And as I was reading it, first off, I was super excited because this was one of my first haters. And I was like, oh yes, I'm so happy about this. But second of all, like it was because what I said made him feel bad about himself or guilty in some way. And so he then wanted to attack me for it. And so like reading through his message, I'm like, dude, this guy's like hurting. He obviously feels guilty and he feels bad that he didn't spend time with his daughter like he should, or that he worked so much so he could, you know, care for her and things. And so a lot of the, the hate comes from people either, maybe they just literally don't like your face or you literally struck a chord with them. And so I want people to realize like when you have a hater, there's a reason for it. Or sometimes people are just psycho, you know, whatever. There's always those, but just get excited about it because it means like you're going somewhere. There's always going to be people who don't like you. There's always going to be people who think that, you know, maybe what you're saying is incorrect or whatever, but at least you're putting yourself out there and you're saying it. And the other point is they're giving you the time in their life to watch your content and to comment. If you get a bonus comment, they're giving you their time. Right. So that's a win. It's a freaking win. So like, I'm trying to re like re-engineer the way people are thinking about haters because it's actually really cool because you can, you can feel it yourself, you know? I, I remember I that. Yeah. I remember growing up and thinking or, and hearing my parents tell me, um, or the common theme, cause I think my parents elaborated on this a little bit more for me than most parents do, but the common theme that when somebody is uh, picking on you or bullying you or ragging on you, whatever it is, um, it's because they're jealous. Right. And I actually think that uh, that might be one small part of it, but I, I don't think jealousy is the only driving emotional right. factor that causes somebody to act like to, to act in or behave in that way. Yeah, I would agree. And I, I think it's because we all tend to see the world in a frame, like a paradigm. Mm -hmm. This is how I've experienced the world. I have a confirmation bias now to look for these things. And so when mm -hmm. I see somebody doing something, I must speak out against that. And I think that for the most part, it's all well-intentioned. There's, there's a, um, there's like a thing behind it that 
you know, that person's trying to like help maybe themselves or you in some way in this example with, with your hater, you know, going off on that whole, well, well, I did this and I did this and I did this. I think it's actually kind of a cry for help in that it's like, yo, I need to be validated as a, as a parent or as a father. Right. Because you, you know, shone a light on on something that I, I don't feel comfortable with. And exactly. the idea that, you know, social media is just a set of pipes and, and they're hollow unless we show up as yeah. human beings. We right. have to go on there and interact. with it. So it's not social media that's the problem. It's the people that that yeah. is a problem. And unless you're willing to approach it with some level of empathy and understanding, you're not ever going to... Um, you're not going to find that connection, which is exactly the point of it. It's social right. media. Yeah. It's meant to have those interactions. And so when you have somebody that takes the time out of their day to come and, you know, insult you because you, let's say we put this podcast out and they had something to say about me going off on a rant right here. Yeah. Well, why are they saying that? You know what I mean? What, where's that coming from? It's like, okay, I understand. Maybe I did talk a little bit too much because we had a guest on and maybe it was the guest's turn to speak, or maybe I just felt like I could add to that conversation in some way. Right. So yeah. the, the way that I look at this is we all, um, you know, in our line of work, especially the marketing world, we all have to deal with and interact with people who see things from a negative paradigm. Right. What do you do to, uh, to, to, create a positive interaction, even though that interaction may initially seem like, um, like something negative. Right. Well, I just want to say, I love your take on that. And I agree about, um, I agree with what you said completely. And I think it's important to know, like on the jealousy thing, like it's not just because someone's jealous of you because, you know, there, there's times where we don't like people and we're not jealous at all. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, so it's definitely, that is one side. Cause that's totally like, there's a, there's a part that is that but I think you're right. And like, there's different facets of why people could have hate, you know, and for like the insecurity part or whatever. But so basically, unless someone is just like outright, completely rude to me, where there's just, there's obviously like something, I don't try to mess with people who like seem off. Some people just want to watch the world burn, right? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, let's acknowledge that. I'm like, if you seem a little like where, no, okay. I'm just going to let you go fly away, butterfly. But Um, but for people like for that guy, for instance, you know, instead of me just getting upset with him writing me about how he didn't, you know, appreciate my father's day post because of this, you know, I read his message and I could see, you know, what he did. And so basically I was just like, you know, I appreciate you writing me because there's people who will write me that have something to say. I appreciate the feedback. It doesn't always mean I'm going to listen to you, but I do appreciate the feedback. And, but with this guy, I just tried to basically see his story. And I was like, you know what? Like, I am sorry that you, you know, have had this happen with your daughter. Like she had to have like brain surgery and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know, obviously like you're, you try to be a good dad. And like, I'm sorry that your daughter had brain surgery and that she had like tumor and all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm like, you know, I see you. Right. And I see that you tried and I appreciate you reaching out and I'm praying for your daughter, you know? And so instead of just coming at him and just like being an ass, like I'm, I can see, like, I'm a human too, you know? I, Which you I totally could. I mean, you're right. well within your means to, to just be a total, you know, right. uh, horrible person about it, but <laughs> on, on the flip side of it. Yeah. You, I <laughs> you, see, Mitch, you saw you, me struggle with that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can, you have, it's well within your right or your means to, to be negative. Right. And, and yeah. sometimes fighting fire with fire feels like it's the right thing to do. Yeah. But uh, I like to come from the frame of like, first of all, if somebody says something like negative about me. I, I ran an ad actually, um, about eight months ago and it was me and my partner. We were on the couch. We were just talking about how our, you know, our marketing system and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. The, the first comment that we got wasn't even like talking about the content itself, which I think was very, very valuable information. The content was like, oh, this guy can't even afford good jeans because I was wearing like my rippy jeans. And so my first instinct was like, okay, that kind of hurts, right? Like yeah. it's an insult to me, my style, like who I am. Like I wear yeah. that kind of stuff. That's I like it. Um, but, I'm but sorry, my look reac- at Zuckerberg, okay? Ain't nobody yeah. judging based on some clothes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> So my con- my comment back to him was like, listen, I need a few clients before I can afford jeans without rips in them. So, <laughs> <laughs> and see, so the thing is, is like I was able to defeat and diffuse what he threw at me 
Yeah. And then, and then give it back to him. And now it was kind of like, we're playing ball. And yeah. I, I think it, it did kind of like transpire to a couple more uh, comments where he's like, you know, the content's still really good. Like, by the way, I wasn't <laughs> mean to be a jerk or whatever. And I think sometimes it's just that a little bit of like diffusion that helps. Like you said, I, yeah. I deployed a little bit of empathy, understood where this guy's coming from. And maybe that dude was trying to be funny with me. And it's a good thing that my first reaction was to assume that he's trying to be funny and then be funny too. Yeah, because you could have just been like, you know, you could have just blocked him or deleted his comment or whatever, you know, you have the power to do that. Yeah, yeah. There, it's funny because um, of I guess it was maybe a couple of weeks ago, I went to see Cruella and I loved it. I loved it because I am a sucker for like the heel in a movie. Like I love the villains. They always end up being my favorite. And it's just funny because it was actually a great movie, but afterward I was like, Oh, like, it's so awesome. Right. So I did this video where I was like, I just looked like super plain Jane, just horrible. And then like, I recorded myself just kind of like doing my makeup a little more dramatic, but like I had captions on it about just like being, becoming who you are. Right. And just being, of being okay with letting the people see who you really are and in embracing that. And it was funny because a lot of, and I did post this on LinkedIn and it was funny because I know it's, it's not the kind of content like people say. I think it's funny when people say that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Thank you for being the LinkedIn police that you, you know, don't think this is the kind of content, but it's my page. So I'm going to post it. And, um, but it was funny because there was a couple of comments where guys was like, makeup isn't going to make you a better person. That's sad. And I'm like, where did you guys get the idea that I, I was saying that makeup was making you? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, it was so, it was funny. So um, the, this, they and they were older paradigm, they were older men. Right. And it was funny because he was like, Oh, make it will make you a better person. That's sad. You know? And I was like, well, I don't know really why you thought this whole message here was about makeup because there's words here that I was trying to say something different. And I'm sorry that you could only see that it was about makeup to you. Right. And so, so that's what I wrote back to him. And he was just like, well, you know, you're, you know, you're a beautiful young lady and, you know, uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm just a grumpy old man or whatever. Right. And I was like, <laughs> and what's so wrong I with the exploration of self? Like wh when did that become a bad thing? I, I don't understand how people on the internet. And I think, uh, right. If we, if we deploy again, a little bit of empathy and look at it, it's probably because that person's too afraid to explore self and feels right. like they must be, you know, inside of this box and these behaviors yeah. must be this way and that way. And, I think yeah, that's really I, sad, I actually. Him, it's funny because when he made the comment about like being a grumpy old man, I was like, you know, it's okay. Cause like, we all are grumpy sometimes like stick around on my page, you know, like I, so I invited him to stay, like stay because <laughs> you can turn haters into fans. Sometimes, sometimes people that like initially don't like you can turn into like lifelong fans or whatever. So I'm like, it's all right. I'm grumpy too. Sometimes like stick around, dude, like comment on my shit. That's fine. Like, so I just try to, you know, and then the, Another example was funny because about you, you were talking about the guy that commented about your jeans. Um, some, this guy just like literally doesn't like, like my content and me for whatever reason, but it was hilarious because he took my logo, which is the alpha wolf and it says alpha and he, he edited it and it says Alpo, which is like a dog food brand and then he posted it in a comment and i was just like this is incredible like thank you for like dude you took the time who like, has don't even the realize. time for that <laughs> do you have a job to do why are you out here photo like i photoshop things on a regular basis yeah. i'm telling you it's not an easy thing to do yeah it takes time this guy put an hour and a half into trying to insult your logo and brand <laughs> like i don't get where aren't you worth a little bit more <laughs> like it was awesome though i was like dude like Maybe I should start a dog food company and like, just take the, you know, thanks for my next brand. You know, I, like, I don't know. It's just funny, but so, sometimes people, like I was saying earlier, is like, you're going to have those that you cannot convert into fans. Like there's just people who will straight up hate you, but it's fine because they're still commenting. Like it's engagement. It's hilarious. I love it when people are, like comment something like so snarky and I'm like, I appreciate your comments so much. And you just made my day. Like I will literally tell them sometimes you made my day. Thank you so much for engaging. Cause like it helps my page. So please keep it up. You know, just I think like, brand, like brand awareness doesn't come with a brand, a bad brand awareness or a good brand awareness, just brand awareness. Right. right? So the more engagement, <laughs> look how many people hate on McDonald's. People have made careers, comedy careers, hating on McDonald's. Are they hurting? No, no. it's brand awareness. Right. Yes. And with social media, I think, um, 
And I think we've seen it, especially in the past few years, because of, you know, situations where people are at home or screen time more, Mm -hmm. but people have become very, um, I think two things, one, they're being, they feel like they're not heard. So social Mm -hmm. media is a platform for them to be heard good or bad. But I also think that we live in a um, generation or time, whatever you want to call it, where we're reactive. Right. And because we have that instant keyboard warrior ability, and it's like, I don't like that. Bam, 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 bam. Hate, 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 hate. Yeah. And then, but as soon as you call them on, it's like, oh, well, well, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. Right. right. Like it was, a, it was an instinct. It's like road rage. Road rage is not Yes. Yes. It happens instantly. <laughs> And I, I think we get that. And, and the comments kind of prove that because I always come from the line of thought that if, if I would never say it to that person, if I'd never like get you on zoom and being like, say something and, and I'm very outspoken, I'm a very opinionated <laughs> person. So it's like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll say those opinions. And I, I try to be respectful, but I'd say a lot of people would never say that out loud in front of people, friends or not what yeah. they post on social media. And to me, that's where, I disagree with any type of negative comment. If you're not willing to say that out loud and some people are, and they're just, that's another level of person as well. (laughs) But I think that's why we see a lot of negativity come at us is because people are reactive, whatever their emotion is they're They've been trained through technology to put that emotion into that little gray box that says comment and they have that entitlement. Right. And so when they see you doing well in a business or perceived, well, it's irrelevant. Right. And, and something, I mean, you put your eighties wig on that you've been, you know, playing with and, and people are going to look at that and it's, it's going to take them back. So what's their first reaction? Uh, I have to, I have to hate, I have to do something negative. I have to stop (laughs) this feeling of uncomfortableness that it's making me feel, but that's, that's what they're doing. But because they're reacting to it, it's, it's stirring an emotion. Yeah. Well, so is that what we're all aiming for? Is that emotional reaction? Like I know from, you know, just my experience in marketing, it's like, there's, there's three emotions that are going to cause people to actually take an action. And that what the first and primary one is anger. If you can yeah. anger somebody, they're immediately going to do something. The other one is if you can make somebody cry, whether that's out of sadness or um, out of inspiration, like mm-hmm. just like something really moving. Yes. And, and then the last one is humor. And if, and I don't mean like, you know, you're scrolling through and you kind of do a little like huff under your breath kind of thing. Like that was kind of cute or coy yeah. or funny. Like yeah. if somebody like full off belly laughs, guaranteed a thousand percent they're going to share that right it's that emotional reaction that we're looking for and when you especially with the anger one because i think that that one's a, a little bit more contagious than the rest if you can anger somebody into taking an action it, it's going to benefit in the long run regardless because yeah. that person may share it with their network and say oh this is outrageous but then you know a dozen people on that network are going to swoop in and be like i don't think so yeah that's what I was going to say when he mentioned that. And so I'm glad you said that because about finding your tribe. So I like, this is for business. Yeah. And like, I post a lot of content that is not really business focused, but like people still know by my page or, you know, whatever. And sometimes I'll bring that in that I do own a business, but I want to find people who are fun to work with. Like I want to find people that I can work with that get my vibe and that I don't have to be afraid to like, try to pretend and and walk on eggshells with like for clients and stuff. Like I want to work with people who, who can enjoy us and like us as a brand, you know? And so that's why we put the content that we put out. Cause I'm not going to hold back and like not show the world who I am for all the fuddy duddies. Cause like, I don't want you as a customer anyway, honey. Like I want people that I want to work with and fun people with personality and like, you know, people with expression and who can understand that you're being funny or silly or that you're being over dramatic on purpose or whatever, you know, like I want people who want to work with us because they like my husband and I as a brand and as people, because that's going to bring them to stay with us longer. And it's going to make it more enjoyable for everybody, because I'm sure you guys know there's clients that you can bring on that maybe even your initial instinct, you're like, this isn't going to be good but I'm going to do it anyway. And then you're like, I was right. You know, so you're like, (laughs) so I, I'm putting my content out there, even on LinkedIn, on a business platform or whatever, people don't like it. I tell them, and I've said it in videos, like, please, for the love of God, realize there are billions of people on this planet 
there are millions of content creators. And if you don't like my page, just don't look at it. But if you do like, just be there. And if you comment, great, I'm going to appreciate the engagement, but it's funny when people complain, cause I'm like, dude, you could be looking at something else. Like it's hilarious. But if you're going to watch my stuff, that's great. It's great for my, my watch time and my account. Like just do it. I started a little thing on Fiverr where um, I do some like, uh, we call them loss leader uh, services. Mm -hmm. So simple stuff like we'll we'll set up your social media page or maybe we'll do like a month's worth of content for you You, and then just pass it off. You can share it, whatever. Um, And so far it's been very rewarding because I've worked with some really, really great companies. They've been return customers and, you know, we've been able to kind of like ascend them up the value ladder and things. Right. Uh, But I knew the second I took this one order, the second I was like, sure, I'll do it. You're like, oh, shoot. (laughs) Every time I turned around, there was a revision. This needed to be updated. This needed to be changed. We need to do this. Oh, you Mm -hmm. used the wrong hashtag. And and it just escalated and escalated and escalated. And uh, I'm not even kidding when I say this. I dealt with this customer for about maybe 28 days. 28 days. And do you know what they paid for the service? Probably not much. And it was not worth your time like $30. Oh my Lord. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So Those the kind of audacity of some people to think, and this is it, right. And we get to, as you know, business owners, and I think that's part of why we do what we do is because we get to choose yeah. whether or not we work with somebody. And I think sometimes if you get yourself stuck, maybe in a scarcity mindset where you're like worried about the next job coming along or whatever. So you start acting and behaving in a way that isn't authentic to yourself. And when yes. you miss that authenticity, you start connecting with the wrong people. And when you mm-hmm. connect with the wrong people, nobody's happy. That customer, not happy with me at Enjoy all. Yep. Not happy and wouldn't listen to me either. Like um, th- they specialized in hemp-based uh, pastas and things like that. And so who do you think is going to interact with the hemp world? You know, they're going to welcome it in. Yeah. Probably people who are very well versed in that atmosphere. People who might like marijuana. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so if I use the hashtag marijuana, people who are into those alternative lifestyles are going to be attracted to these alternative lifestyle products. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Try convincing this person who, for whatever reason, was like, no, it actually uh, makes us look bad because we're associating with criminals. And I'm like, hey, by the way, it's (laughs) not a criminal thing anymore. Like there was just so. And so that whole going back and forth and and not really qualifying that customer right from the very beginning was actually more work than it was just to sit and wait for a customer that was better suited. And just be willing to say no. Yeah. Yeah. And that that comes back to the content and the haters and and making sure that, you know what, I'm good. If somebody comes to me and wants to say some negative things about me, that's cool. You're not the kind of person that I want to work with. And the people that work with me find, you know, a lot of success. So that's your loss, right? But knowing your own self-worth. Person complaining about a $1.50 burger. Um, Let's, uh, let's, let's (laughs) go to the other topic that, um, yeah, that, that Jennifer (laughs) wanted to to hit up. So talking about social media. We've talked about kind of some downsides to it, how to turn those negatives into positives, how to take on the haters one by one. Um, but there's a lot of successful people on on social media platforms. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we talked about Grant Cordone and, you know, I follow Brad Lee and there's, you know, lots of others that are really cool. Uh, Ed Milets and, uh, you know, yes, those yes. of the world's. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're up there, right? They're, they're, they're people that, you know, entrepreneurs look to for, for mentorship. Um, but what's kind of a danger that you've noticed as far as that, cause there's also people that are fake, right? They, yeah. They're fake successful because you can project whatever you want on social media. Right. So what's, what's the, the one close to your heart, that danger. So I feel like, and, and you guys can let me know your opinion on this, but I feel like once I became like a business owner and I tried to like break into the entrepreneur space, I have struggled more with like that depression trying to grab me than like than ever before in my life. I feel like, because it's such an up and down roller coaster, like what you were saying, like between the next client or whatever it is, right. And you go through spurts where you have tons of momentum and you, and you, you know, get lots of people coming in then you go through a little bit drier spells and things like that. And so it's like this roller coaster and, and you're talking to yourself all the time in your head. And I, you know, I did a video recently about speaking negative to yourself. Like you wouldn't talk to a stranger, like the way that we talk to ourselves internally, like I wouldn't, you know? And so, and then I'm like, God, why do I do that though? Cause like, it's, 
there's nobody pressuring me to be mean to myself, but, but me, you know? And like, so it comes from too. And like with Grant Cardone, 10X, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like one of his growth conferences, anything like that, but you know, I love the idea of having big dreams. Like I do, I do not want to put limits on myself. And, but at the same time, if you have an expectation that sometimes isn't really possible or like you're on your way, but like you're expecting way bigger, like, I feel like it can really hurt yourself and your mind and like your mental stability in, and your whole journey with that. Cause like, for example, like when you go to like a business conference, I'm sure people like who've gone to Tony Robbins or, you know, all these big conferences that it's just, it's like the glam and, and the hype, the energy, and you're around other entrepreneurs who like love the same thing. And so you're just like in there with your own crowd. Right. And it's like the coolest thing. It's like the biggest high. And you're just like, Oh my God, like all these people in here, like they want to do good too. Like they get me, they understand. Like you get, you have all these emotions, you know? And so you're in this conference for two or three days and, and you're living like this whole thing. And then when you go home though, like if you're not, it's like, we went to, my husband went to one right when we started, um, our agency. And then we went to another one like the next year and the next year. And so, you know, when you come back to reality, when you haven't hit the same goals and you haven't done the same things that the people that you're looking up to have done, and then you go back to like real life and it's not as cool and you're not surrounded by a bunch of people because it's hard to find good people to surround yourself with. So if you're, when you come back to your own little cave and you're not in that hype experience anymore and like life doesn't seem as glamorous and as freaking awesome yet because you're not there yet, like you can really spiral into being like, oh my God, like, you know, my life sucks or it's not where I want it to be. And then you kind of like hit this wall where you make yourself stuck. Because you're like, you feel it's like you're constantly like hitting against the wall with yourself every day. Cause you're like, I, I want to strive for this. Like I'm going to get up and I'm gonna work my tail off, but I'm not actually there yet. And so like, it's just like this back and forth thing. So the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, I'm sure I could be wrong, but I'm sure I'm not the only person in the world who's ever been to events and stuff who has been so hyped up, especially when something's so new. And then you come back to reality and you realize like my reality isn't like that yet. And so then you kind of, you know, you struggle through that journey of trying to break through that. And it took me like a while, like it was, and it was really surprising because I didn't expect it, which was one of the other things. So I wanted to kind of just bring that up and see what you guys think about it, because to me, that's so important. And I think people are probably afraid to talk about that because it makes you seem like, you know, maybe you were insecure or you don't want to show the world that like you thought about that stuff, you know? So everyone's trying to be like, I'm big and strong. I'm freaking awesome, blah, blah, blah. But the because reality three out of a hundred, like knocked it out of the park, but also they had way more resources, connections in their network exactly. and like assets to begin with. Yeah. And so you sit there as the other 97 going like, what the fuck did I do wrong? I don't understand why this isn't working. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. My makeup company didn't take off. Like, uh, like Kylie, one of the Kardashian girls, Kylie. you know, like, it's like, <laughs> cause you well, don't have how, a how come I can't, how story. come I can't be a, a self-made billionaire? And it's like, well, cause she wasn't a self-made billionaire. She came from money, but you know, at, talking to the conferences, it's, it's kind of funny because, um, I thought about this a long time ago, um, when I did a lot of traveling and I'd, I'd hit the conferences and I, I worked for a big company and you'd come back and it took three days for me to be okay with being back. Mm. And I started feeling like, why, what is happening to me? Like I would, but you're on this emotional high yeah, for that entire time. Usually they're like two, three day events, but it's not just about being on that emotional high at the event. It's you don't have to make your bed because you're staying in a hotel, right? <laughs> Food's provided for you. You're there, you're, you're catching the buffet or you're, you're, you know, yeah. you're there at lunch and then dinner, you're going out with people that you've met. And you're having fun. You're staying out later than you traditionally stay out. And, and you're just, you're on this go mentality and you're full yep. of energy. And then you get talking about something you're passionate about, like your business or your goals. And then you feed off other people and everyone's like ah, blowing up. And then you hit the plane on the way home and you're just like, it's over. Yep. And, and you haven't really taken away any value at that moment. 
And those few days where you're back in a routine where it's like, oh, I got to get up and go back to work. Or now I have to deal with reality or guess what? I got to make my own breakfast. I hate my life. But then like three days, you kind of, so you go to rock bottom almost. And then you come back up and you get back and then you can reflect on the highlights of it and say, what did I take away from that? And that's, that's why I think taking notes, taking any sample, any, anything you can take from it, take with you that will be there after you crash and burn from that. And it's the same, whether it's on holidays, but, you know, applying it to say that, that business conference. But I think social media does that in little instances, Mm -hmm. you know, you see someone your age, you know, you said you're 30, I'm 32. You see someone that's in their early thirties and they're on the jet yeah, and it's like, or their podcast has 4 million viewers. Yep. I'm like, man, I'm never going to get there. Right. This podcast doesn't do that. My business, I don't own a jet. But that's like that hitting that rock bottom after getting on that emotional high for that five yeah. second video. Yeah. We're looking at someone's content for 10 seconds. Right. And yep. you, you have to figure out a way to come back up into your your life and say, OK, that's not me. Doesn't mean I'll never get there. But what can I take with me to build on and be that one percent better today and one percent better tomorrow? And I, I think social media does that to us almost subconsciously. Yeah, I, Just, I completely agree. I read a book. Uh, And I think this is really, really close to the very beginning of my journey in the world of like marketing. Uh, It's called Trust Me, I'm Lying, Ryan Holiday. If you haven't read it, you need to. This this should be part of like a grade five curriculum to read this book, to understand what's going on in the world. So you ask a biologist how things work and they're going to tell you it's DNA. You ask a chemist how it works, it's going to be chemistry. You ask a mathematician how the world works and they're going to explain it with formulas and equations. Ask a marketing guy how the world works. And I'm telling you, everywhere you go, there's marketing. And this is exactly part of that marketing engine. So let's use the the conference as an example. You get, you buy your tickets, you get on a plane, you go to your hotel, you're all hyped up, you go spend a day there and you go from here, you know, in the basement to literally cloud nine. Yeah. And they, they do a really, really good job of that whole entire time, keeping you up there, keeping you hype, keeping you mm-hmm. feeling that emotion. Why? Because 99% of the guys that are there are actually trying to sell you some other things. Oh yeah. So when they get you in that heightened state of emotion, believing in all of this, you know, this really cool stuff, and I'm not discounting, trust me, I, from a guy who does business coaching and who has paid like tens of thousands of dollars for business coaching. I know the value in, in having that. So I'm not discounting that there is value there, but there's this, there's this like stages to it where, um, you can be cynical and, and just not believe everything and just sit there like harumph, you know what I mean? Just like not care about the whole thing. You can be critical, right. And then, and, and, and realistic and go, yeah, okay, this is really great information. What can I put in my book and take home with me that I can apply later? I think that's the safest place to live. And then there's kind of like the bottom side of that, where you're very pessimistic, um, and, and think negatively about anything and everything. And so you have a complete wall up and it doesn't matter what information is shared with you. You're not going to be receptive to it. So that's the conference, right? But let's take that conference now and let's chop it up into three minute video segments and put that shit on Facebook. So now when you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through, you don't realize, but your brain is looking for that dopamine spike that you got from the conference or maybe from, you know, other five minute, three minute long videos that inspired you to take action. And so you're looking for something to give it to you. And the one thing that I learned um, in all of this journey is, um, is, is to be realistic, but then uh, think of things in, in terms of uh, how am I measuring this? What, what, what am I, uh, what am I doing? How am I spending my time? What am I accountable for? And how am I improving from where I was yesterday? Because here's the thing is the second I compare myself to Gary Vaynerchuk with a $400 million media company, I'm trash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing that comes to my mind is I'm, oh, that's, you know what I mean? I'm never going to have that. And it's very easy for me to be, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to quit this and walk away. And, and there are cycles that we go through that, you know, we're on this really high and then we come down here and we're like, Oh, it's not, nothing's working. And I'm an idiot. And then you, you know, something (laughs) connects and then you kind of past where you were before. And so that's it is just looking back at like, where, where was I yesterday? Where was I a month ago? Where was I six months ago, a year from, from today? Where was I? And, and then when I compare that version of me with the version I am right now, I can see some very clear progress, which means I'm doing the right things. Yes. 
And now I need to be patient. And that patience is what's going to pay off in the long run and be more rewarding. Right. I'm glad that you said about patience because like the, it's funny when you said that it literally that was in my head at the same moment because I am one of the most impatient people you could probably ever meet. I like Guilty. when I want something, my God, like I, it, I want it to be here like yesterday, you know, like three weeks ago. And it's just funny because, and I think when you're talking about like the peak moment, um, I think probably what trashed me, cause you're saying about like Gary V when John Travolta walked into the room, like, I don't know that it's going to take a lot to like hit that dopamine level ever again. You know what I mean? Like when, <laughs> when, yeah, like, when it was like a surprise because it was a surprise. Right. And so Grant was like talking about, he was, you know, trying to make us guess what, who was coming out. And I was like, Oh, oh like, who is this going to be? And then all of a sudden, like grease lightning, like started coming to the background. I'm like, he is not, he is not to, about to bring John Travolta out here right now. And I was like telling my husband and David, cause we were all there together. And I was like, dude, it's John Travolta. It's John freaking Travolta. Just, just wait, just wait. And then all of a sudden he comes out and I like, I think I went to Mars, like where Elon Musk is, you know, and, and then came back because I just, I freaking love him. I grew up watching his movies and stuff. And, but anyway, so when you hit that kind of high, like, and then to come home and be regular again and like not be in the room with John Travolta and like, I don't know, it's just, it's funny. Cause like you definitely are like, my life's not, but then you go through this roller coaster of like, okay, just don't stay in like a negative mindset. And then maybe your life could be there. Maybe you could meet John Travolta someday. So I try and I fight with myself all the time because I have some days I will just have a day that I feel like is completely wasted mentally because I'm like, I, I am having a bad day and I recognize it. And I'm like, I just can't shake it today. Like there's days where I try to like motivate my own self to like get out of my bad mood and I can't do it. And I'm like, I guess to tomorrow will be better. You know, like it's that's like just zooming in on the graph. This your data set becomes this and today. Yeah. This is today. And I'm like, terrible, even worse. This day <laughs> sucks. Right? Know, but when yeah. you zoom out in the data set and you look like like a lot of sorry, I'm I'm doing stocks <laughs> lately. So <laughs> when you zoom out or you look overall, you know, the, the grander trend of things is that you know, there's there is this steady kind of growth and just like yeah. anything else, there are those setbacks, there are those things, and you know, when you recognize it. Um, it's the action you take in those moments that, that really does truly define the path that you're on right. as an example, you know, when you're in those really, really bad moods and, and nothing is connecting, there's nothing wrong with just putting shit down right now. And yeah, I'll come back to this when my head's in the right. Cause I'm not getting anywhere. In fact, I'm probably yeah. ruining things. I need to <laughs> right. this year and go do something. And I find, um, like nature is just really refreshing for me. I'll go out and take my shoes off and, you know, just kind of take a stroll through a river or something. And for whatever reason, it just, it <laughs> feels awesome. way better for me. <laughs> what do you use that? I <laughs> I'm, I, I, was, I was a hippie in a previous <laughs> life. I think <laughs> what do you searching do you for, uh, do? searching for a ring? Yeah, <laughs> that's what um, I said. I was like, I just met Frodo today. That's awesome. Yeah, um, you did. Oh, I have some wild stories of of <laughs> just some very very that weird moments in my life. But what awesome. do you do, Jen, to um to help in in those moments? Like when you are at those low things, do you recognize it? And what do you do to kind of like take correct corrective action? Well, so like I like I said, there's some days I just I just kind of accept the fact that I'm in a bad mood. And then I just kind of like ease into everything. Cause I feel like if I'm like edgy or whatever, like I just have to like kind of move slow that day. You know what I mean? Cause like what, what you said, it's just everything kind of seems like it's either floating on the same level as worse, like where, what you feel, or it just kind of spirals down. But my thing is um, what I learned that I had to do and implement into my life is taking time for myself because I, I realized over like a decade that like, I barely had any alone time with myself, like to really just actually get to know myself, right. To like sit in the quiet. So like, I love to go out and just take a couple hours and just like be alone and just be in the world and not like be on my phone. And sometimes like I'll do a video or something for content, you know, um, cause I do a lot in my car, but it's cause like, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, realizing like, what are, what is something like, I just kind of either I'm quiet 
or I put on music. Like I love music. Music is something that just resonates with my soul, all kinds of music. And so I, you know, I just either listen to music and sing in my car alone, or I just, just kind of sit and just think about things and just realize that I'm alive and like see the texture. Like recently I did a video where I'm like, try to like, don't just go by where you're going. Like, even if you're driving, like see the crap around you, like, don't just zone out and like not see it because everything is worth seeing. Right. So I try to almost like grounding yourself where you, you see things like you're like, okay, there's texture on the leaves and the bark in front of me. It's not just like this brown and green blurry thing outside that I'm not paying attention to, you know? So like what you said about nature, like just trying to like really see the reality around me. And then it kind of helps me to self-reflect and see how far I've come. Because like what you said is like, if you look back in the big picture, you can see you really have come a long way. Like where I am right now, I was praying about, you know, six plus months ago, like as far as, you know, certain things in my life. And so it's just one of those things where, yeah, you can have a bad day, but you've had worse days, you know? And that's what I tell myself. I'm like, you know, think about where you are right now. Think about your situation, your life right now. This is what you were dreaming of this long ago, this long ago, this long ago. Like you've come so far and you never thought you could even live like this on like the scale that it is now. So like keep going. And then like, when you get to the next place where you don't feel great, you're going to look back and be like, wow, like I've come even farther. So for me, I have to self-reflect. That's something I have to do. Like I just, I implement that into my life now. So that's what I do. But I love the nature walk idea (laughs) in the river. I I write music actually. It's so funny that you say that. And there's a moment when, you know, you hear some instrumentation and things and some sounds and it kind of inspires an idea. Yeah. And like, if you were to sit in the same room as me while I was going through that process, for the first hour, you would most definitely think that I was just wasting time because I'm literally just staring off into nothingness right. and like waiting for words to conjure themselves into some arrangement so that I can make sense out of those words. And I think right. that, that idea that you point at, sometimes you just you just need to think. That thinking part is just as important as yeah. the doing part. And exactly. not to say that spend all your time thinking because I am still a ready, fire, aim kind of guy. Like get ready, take a shot and then see where it landed so you can get better. Yeah. Like fail fast, fail frequent, fail forward. I, I really believe in that. But, th- but there is a, a, a moment in time where there is a necessity for that cause uh, for reflection, I think. Yeah. What do you do, Mitch? What do you um, do? I, same thing. Like I, I have, uh, I'll pick up my guitar. I've got like a whole collection of guitars and uh, or I'll listen to music, but I also write comedy like stand up nice. comedy. So I'll just like start writing stuff down, but I, I love, like, I've done a ton of, um, like rock climbing hikes, um, like glaciers, stuff like that. I, oh, I love awesome. that. But I think, I think something for me that was kind of a, a big changer was, um, this concept of an internal monologue and some people don't have it and some people do. Right. And when I started looking into that, I started realizing why some people talk a lot when I, I talk, I'll talk a lot around people, but by myself, I just like, I'll sit there and I might, I must look like I should be in a psych ward because <laughs> like the conversation has like six voices going on in my head. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it, it, but I have this and it goes, my mind's at a million miles an hour, but some people don't have that. They need to vocalize it in order to hear it so that they can right. mull it over. And I think knowing what, knowing how you produce information, how you meditate on information is important. And for me, it's talking to myself yeah. in my head. That's I, how I, work I talk to problems. myself too. Yeah. It's how I Not work alone. through problems. <laughs> and, uh, and especially that's why I like going on hikes. That's why I like you know, doing the stand-up comedy material. That's why I like writing music because that's a way of communicating with myself. And you can work through a lot by by doing that. But if that's yeah. not for you, I encourage people, like if it means talking out loud because that's how you process information and that's how you get through things. Otherwise, you're going to go crazy yeah. not being able to process information because the world throws a ton of information at you. And it's not being able to process that that that's what gives you an overload. And then, you know, there's breakdowns and and people have anxiety because 
they can't cope with all that, you know, stimulation of, of information. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's important to realize how to do that. And I think to be able to identify that for, for each of us shows that that's an important part, especially when you're running a business, yeah. especially when you're endeavoring to become an entrepreneur, because now you just don't have the social media and the network and, and the job. Now, all of a sudden you have a completely different responsibility and a different world that is now sitting on your shoulder yeah. that you have to deal with as well. And so you have to identify, how do I process information? Do I do it individually? Do I need other people around me to help me with that? What do I need? And to right, identify right. that. So that's, that's my triggers, but that's, what's led me to realize that that's why I like playing guitar. Oh, that's why I like writing music. That's why I like writing comedy. That's why I like hiking because that's time where I not just reflect, but process. Right. Yeah. There, that's there was awesome. a guy that, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Go ahead. So there was a guy that made me present to this idea that if the voice in your head was to come out of your head and become a person, would you be friends with that person? Not all of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you guys tricked me out here for a therapy session. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that often because I, I catch myself now. Now that I, I think about it in that, in that way, that I've been like given that as a gift. I, I, I think about like, okay, uh, you know, I was doing something today and it wasn't really productive. And that's so now I'm kind of like beating myself up. And then I'm like, yeah. yo, bro, that's me. Calm down. We are together in this. You know what I mean? Cause sometimes yeah. I, uh, the, the voice in my head will just be beating me up and, and telling me all this negative stuff. And so I think that, that setting boundaries with yourself is so important too, to know, like, I'm comfortable with the progress that I'm making today. And if I'm not comfortable even making progress and I can recognize that and I can move on. Yeah. And then when you put, take yourself and that battle that you're having with yourself now, and you combine that with the influence of being connected to literally millions and billions of people on the internet, uh, the possibilities are endless, Yeah, but they, they can also be really, really detrimental if you're not armed to, to deal with that. So I love that, uh, um, you've shared some very, uh, I, I would say useful strategies when it, when it comes to that, um, before we wrap things up, uh, if there's anything like significant, you know, like, like the one thing that really made a difference in your journey so far, when it came to interacting with people on social media, uh, what would that thing be? I think it's always going to go back to finding your tribe. Like we were talking about, because, like the haters and stuff, like if, if new business owners are going to watch this and they're going to, especially like as this is growing and everything, and you know, they could watch this a year from now or whenever someone's going to click on, you know, or, or hear this somewhere, you know, whatever part of your journey that you're on, you know, you need to realize that, you know, comparing yourself to everyone else is not, it's good to be inspired, but to like compare yourself sometimes, like you were saying, can be detrimental because you're going to, you can hinder yourself and slow down your progress because you're either scared or you're realizing where you're not at. And then it kind of just slows you down. It's like this weird automatic slowdown that it's almost like you don't even try. It's like involuntary. And like, you just, you, you like move like a slug, you know? So I would just encourage people to be careful with who you're listening to pick like one person to listen to one of the big things that kind of messed me up in the beginning was because I just exploded into the entrepreneur universe. I was listening to Gary V Ed Grant, Ty Lopez, um, like just everybody, right. Jordan Belfort. Like, so I was take, Oh, Dan Locke was one of the ones I, I heard at the beginning. And so everybody has, and, uh, who Billy Jean is marketing, right. All these people, and they, they all have their own way that they, they came up, right. They all have their own way of success and what worked for them. And it's not going to be the same for everybody. And like what worked for them is pro it may not work for you. You know what I mean? And so one of the things that really probably kept me from gr like getting further along in the beginning, because I didn't realize how important it was to just kind of pick someone to listen to and just move with that and go with the flow with that and try it. Because I was, I was listening to everyone. And if you listen to like their overall message of each of those people that I listed, a lot of them go against each other. Like what Grant does might be different than what Billy does and what Jordan does and all these people. And so you're trying to do all of the things they mentioned all at once. And you're like making this big pot of stirring in all their advice and you're not going anywhere. 
Cause like you're, you're just stuck listening to everyone. So one of the things that I would say is like, pick someone, yeah, have a mentor and then stop listening so much to everyone because that can really stop you from, from getting going because I I felt like I was listening so much that I wasn't taking enough action. And then when I was, I was kind of confused because I'm like, well, Dan said I should do this, but then Grant said I should do that. And then Ty said I should do this. What do I even do? Cause like when you're new to, you know, business and all this kind of stuff, like, especially if you didn't go to school for business, college, whatever, like you're just brand new to it all and you're thrown in and then you're just learning about everything. And so I would just say like, one of the biggest things is just pick someone, listen to one voice, try it, like go all in on trying it. And then if it doesn't work, be willing to pivot, being able to pivot, I feel is super key in business because if you think that you're just going to keep doing the same thing that doesn't work over and over and over and over and over that, and you're not willing to try something different, then, you know, you need to be willing to try something different and see if something else maybe can work better. So there's just so many things that you can get overwhelmed. And I was definitely overwhelmed. And once I realized I was like, okay, just kind of quiet things down, pick a way and then try that. And then things started kind of coming together and I felt more confident in myself, felt more able to like focus and really realize what I needed to do versus just listening to everyone and then feeling stuck. So just, that's what I would say is just make sure that you really know where you're getting your information from and then try not to like listen to everyone else as well. Cause it can just stop you in your tracks basically. Kenny Rogers was uh, a singer, songwriter, guitarist for a very good portion of his life with very menial, little to no success. It wasn't until he was 51 that something finally connected and, and things took off for him and turned him into the the yeah, star that we know him to be yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he still played every Christmas with Dolly Parton in my house. So <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes being patient. You got to enjoy the, enjoy the journey. Uh, mm-hmm. not the That's destination so you, you'll yeah. be you'll be chasing a destination because the destination is always moving so exactly. I, I love I love that uh your journey has really kind of encapsulated that as an idea uh, so that's a wrap for this episode. If you are watching or listening, um, like, comment, share, follow, wherever you are, um, just to show a little bit of support. If you could rate this in whatever app you're in too, um, if, if you're just listening to the audio, it's going to really help the algorithm uh, get us out to more people. That is, of course, if you think that we're helping with this, um, we'd love to hear from you. Email theperspective at gmail.com. <laughs> haters, leave your comments too. <laughs> and, yeah, and haters, drop some down below. Let us know where we're screwing up so that we can keep going. Had too sorry i had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys we'll see you guys in the next episode